Welcome to the Q&Rs, Q the question and responses for the cervical spine video. Now we're going to get a cut, but uh, it's going to be in two parts. One, this part here, then I'm going to try and answer as many questions as I can. And then the other, the uncensorable ones that have sensitive topics, those will be on the Dr. P, may I be. Thank you so much for your comments, and I'm going to try and get to more as much as I can. So keep commenting, questioning, and thank you, thank you for sharing it. Uh, I love this. Question one, Roseanne, Rosanna Dana. <laughs> if anybody remembers Saturday Night Live, I remember. I'm not so sure if you've ever said this question in choosing the best doc at Cairo. What should I look for? A retired RN, my whole body is a mess with DJD and osteoarthritis um, or osteoporosis. Both are those going to, those are correctable. Okay, so we have a video that says seven questions to find a corrective chiropractor or questions to find a corrective chiropractor. Now, but look at it. It's just basic. We've got a website opening up in January that we're going to have actually chiropractors that are skilled in doing this. Number one, do you take an x-ray? That's basic because this gives you a baseline to work from. Now, a lot of doctors will take an x-ray just so they can build insurance, and that's not appropriate. You need to take it to identify structural abnormalities. Now, stress x-rays means that you're taking it, bending and seeing how the joints move to see if there is fusion or not fusion or if there's still movement. This gives a predictability in the amount of recovery that you can get. Second, do you take a post x-ray to document the structural changes? And that is, again, I think basic. I mean, when you get your car in for service, they give you a box of the parts they took off. You know, then... Um, knowing that you're doing pre and post x-rays, you're going to see structural changes such as arthritis. Now, a lot of people, and I'm talking over 90% of the ones that have had surgery, need corrective care because the surgery is going to be in one site, but any surgery is going to alter the biomechanics of that area. It's not going to restore the biomechanics of the area above and below the surgery. got to move twice as much. So question three, man, can you work on post-surgery patients? Then do you work on seniors and kids? Because a lot of doctors, again, they limit their, their practice to what they're familiar with. Okay, And if you're expanding it out, you've got to work on seniors. You've got to work on kids because these are age groups that really require good corrective care. And then do you get listings off of the, uh, the x-rays, which is hugely important. So that means you're actually using them to help guide your care. And then, um, so you're getting do you take an x-ray? Do you take a post x-ray? Do you work on post-surgery patients? Do you work on seniors and kids? Um, then also, is your goal to restore form and function, which is huge. It's so far beyond symptom relief. What's your pain level like? Well, 90% of the nerves that come off the spine, there's no pain fibers. So <laughs> you've got to look at somebody who's looking beyond the symptom of the moment and actually how the body's working. So look at those seven questions, and I'll help you in any way I can to find a corrective doc. But they are out there. It's just you're looking at way less than 10% of the docs are doing this. And it doesn't mean that what we do is right and what they do is wrong. It's just that this is, um, we have certain protocols. Um, now, question two, House of the Greater Danes. Ah, <laughs> God, I love your name. How do I help my body with discectomy and fusion of C5, C6, C7, T1? I have a good chiropractor, but he is not corrective. Okay, number one. Okay, because that is a heck of a fusion. And I have had patients with, with um, actually higher than that as well. I've seen from C2 on down to T1, and that is a bear. Um, but you've got to get stress x-rays because that area, and you're talking the, the cervical thoracic junction, your 50% of the rotation of the head occurs at C1, C2. So that area is going to be um, moving twice as much because it's under abnormal force loading. So you've got to get somebody that's skilled in C1. They do a stress x-ray. Even with the surgery, you've got to find out what the vertebrae are doing. And then look at restoring the lumbar curve because your body is going to be leaning forward to take the pressure off below the surgery site. So find a corrective chiropractor, someone that's skilled, with doing stress x-rays and static x-rays, uh, your chiropractor can give me a call. Um, I always do, do no charge consults when I'm talking with a chiropractor. So this way, um, if he has any questions, he can call me direct. 
at, at any one of my offices. They'll give my cell phone out in a moment to a chiropractor. Um, question three from Tisse13. So when sleeping, the whole arm goes numb. It, there's some ligament damage. Um, the, and let me keep reading. So when the muscles relax, the vertebrae and disc are putting pressure on the nerve. Question again, which part of the nerve and which nerve? Is there any way a person can fix that on their own? Um, generally, if you know what the problem is, you can fix it. This is why we give corrective exercises to everybody, okay? Because you have to maintain it. I mean, if you're sitting in a chair or in a car or something, this is an altered biomechanics. So we give exercises to sit with, to, to do everything with. But I cannot give exercises unless I know what the structure looks like. I know what a normal looks like, but I don't know what type of accident history a human being has had. And that's only evident on those static and stress x-rays. Now, arm feels numb. That is not, um, that's not when muscles relax, okay? Arm numb means nerve compression. Now, the brachial plexus, which is the nerve plexus that supplies the entire arm, comes out of C5 down through T1. And this is the nerve plexus that goes there. So there's, and it's interesting that C5, C6 is the most common area of damage in the neck. And that's just biomechanically at how we're built. You know, we got a, a big 12 to 15 pound head on top of a mobile neck and C5. If there's been a forward head carriage or trauma, that that's going to be put under an abnormal force loading. So you've got to look at the neck 100%. There's going to be forward head carriage, loss of curve, reversal of curve, some kind of pathology in the neck. That neck sits on the thoracic area, so you got to look at the whole thing. Now, when muscles relax, vertebral discs are putting pressure on the nerve. Kind of, kind of not, but when you change your position, going from weight-bearing with it, where this, this head is pu pulling down on that structure, and then you go to lay down, you might have an increased curve at the back. There may be some kind of structural deviations. That's why when you're talking brachial plexus, and that's the lower neck area, you have got to look at the thoracic and lumbar because if you're missing a lumbar curve, your whole back flattens out and then that throws the head forward, putting that area under stress and strain. So you got to look at the entire structure. Um, uh, which part of the nerve and which nerve? It really depends because it's not just that nerve. Like if you have um, you know, a problem and that numbness and tingly is going up to the index finger and the thumb, Typically, that's the sixth cervical nerve root. Then the little ping, finger, um, typically that's the eighth cervical nerve root. So, so you can have a specific nerve root give specific symptoms, but it's not going to be that specific nerve root problem. You got to look at the positioning of the head, the curve in the, in the neck, and the structure of the thoracic and lumbar area. Fixing that on your own, and I, you got to find out the problem. Some problems can be corrected with a lot of um, specific exercises. But with this, when you're laying down and your arm goes numb, uh, there is something, uh, something wrong there. You gotta get checked out by a corrective chiropractor. Look at our seven questions to find a good one. But if they're not using x-rays, I, I would not go to that person. Uh, question four, Klein Aerotex. If I do anything like knitting, mending, just holding the steering wheel at times, my hands tingle, falling asleep, goes quickly away if I shake my arms, comes back when I continue my work. What should I do? I, it is coming from the neck for sure. Okay, this is guaranteed it's coming from the neck. You've got to get to a corrective chiropractor that's going to take a static and stress x-ray. But you cannot look at just the neck. You've got to look at the entire structure. Um, doctors really get into trouble when they only x-ray the site of symptoms. And they're not looking at why the symptom's there. Because if you have a thoracic deviation or loss of curve in the lumbar or, or an unstable pelvis or, or upper cervical trauma, all of those things can be contributing factors. And just think of it. Okay, sit them nice and straight in your chair, slide your shoulders over, but keep them level. Where do you feel it? You're going to feel it in the neck, in the low back, everything. So you've got to look at the entire structure. So look at our seven questions, get to a corrective chiropractor. If they have any questions, they can give me a call and we'll get you fixed up because this is, it's scary because we need our hands for work. Question five from Roxana Ikes. Um, 
how to treat cranial um, cervical instability. I have a C0, C1, C2 instability with grinding and popping noises along general joint laxity. Adjustments don't hold. Is prolotherapy a good idea? Um, I'm, uh, prolotherapy, for those that don't know, you're, you're injecting an irritating solution that creates scar tissue to stabilize it. No, I would not recommend prolotherapy Okay, on this. Cervical cranial instability. Figure 50% of the rotation occurs at that neck at that C1, C2 area. The other 50% is with the lower cervical spine. And adjustments aren't meant to hold, okay? What has to happen with vertebrae, because they need movement for life, okay, is you have to get the position and motion of the vertebrae. So if you're having subluxation patterns that are not holding at C1, C2, the doctor's missing the area, okay? Have them look at the lower cervical, look at the lumbar, look at the thoracic area, Look at the entire structure. Plus, when you're looking at ligamentous laxity, okay, ligaments have to do with your, you're building ligaments all the time, but you need amino acids broken from the protein. So physical, chemical, emotional stress will give you less stomach acid. So diet changes, sleep pattern changes, biomechanics during the day to stabilize that neck. So if your head's down all day long, looking at a computer or something, getting exercises to get that cervical curve back to help stabilize that C1, C2 are going to be hugely important. But you have to look at it's different than C0, C1, C2. You know, you've got to look at the entire structure. What kind of, what kind of alteration or deviation do you have that's causing that area to be used twice as much? That's the question. And, and you don't want to inject something to stabilize something Okay, without understanding why it's not stable. So fixing the diet, fixing the sleep, fixing the entire structure, lower neck area, upper thoracic, lumbar, look at the entire structure, restore that, change the sleep patterns, change the nutrients, and then your, your body will be good to go. Now, if your question wasn't answered, um, please visit the Dr. BVIP site, and God bless you. And stay healthy, my friends. Thank you.